Invertebrate surveys allow us to understand the status of species populations, not just what is caught. Data, such as abundance and length, are used to calculate stock densities and track sizes and help develop management strategies for the sustainable use of fishery resources. While there are many fishery independent survey methods, we will focus on a method known as Reef Benthos Transect, or RBT. Here, we will be collecting information on the identification, abundance, and length of sea cucumbers. The dimensions of RBT depends on spatial distribution of the animals and plants being surveyed. In this video, we will discuss the RBT method using six 40 meter long by two meter wide belt transect. The things that you will need for the survey are serviced and working dive gear, a dive slate with ruler, underwater paper and waterproof pencils, GPS and spare batteries, a cotton distance counter or long tape measure, a compass and depth gauge, and a good set of eyes. A survey team should have a minimum of four team members, a boat captain, a technical assistant, and two divers. One is the navigator, and one is the recorder. Before the survey, you must select the preferred habitats of the species that you are attempting to survey. This is so that you can be certain that the areas you sample are suited for the species you want to survey, because you will not find species associated with reef front habitats at inshore habitats and therefore count zeros. Please refer to the information in the SPC guide as a starting point for understanding habitat references. There should be a clear plan for the day's survey, including the following. Which stations do you want to visit? Do you have enough fuel? What should you do if the weather becomes unsafe? A pre-survey briefing should also be held to clarify everyone's roles for the day. Navigate to a pre-selected station using a GPS. After arriving, the boat should be anchored and a waypoint is taken to identify the starting position of the RBT. Before getting in the water, the following information should be recorded on the slate. The date, the general location, that is the name of the reef or community, the station code, the waypoint number, the recorder's name. After that, the in-water team should enter the water, establish the direction of their transect, and notify the boat captain. Once on the bottom, all members should indicate they are ready to proceed with the survey. In this example, the method consists of six transects per station, with each transect 40 meters long and two meters wide and laid in series, one after the other, with a 10 meter gap between each. The navigator starts first, laying out the transect line using a compass and depth gauge to navigate in the chosen direction at a consistent depth. It's okay to meander if you need to navigate around abrupt changes in habitat, provided that you maintain the transect in the original chosen habitat. For example, the coral reef flat, seagrass, or outside reef slope. The recorder writes down which transect they are surveying and then follows searching for sea cucumbers in a two meter wide band with one meter on each side of the transect line. When a sea cucumber is observed, the species name and its length is recorded on the data sheet. You must measure the length without touching or disturbing the animal. All sea cucumbers encountered on the transect should be identified and at least 30 length measurements per species, per transect, and then just count the rest. The circled number is the count after 30 measurements have been made. To ensure that any data collected is not damaged or lost, be sure to file the data sheet in a protective folder and create a digital copy by photographing it as soon as possible. 
Entering the data into the database should be carried out each day when you return. It is important to take daily notes on observations and record details of the work carried out, stations visited, and any particular habitat related issues. Safety is paramount at all times when working in coastal areas and at sea. First of all, all members of your team should be trained and fully certified divers. Secondly, someone on land should always know your location at sea and when you have returned to land. Most importantly, be sure to carry a safety bag that has spare fresh water for drinking and emergency communication devices and flares.